Good morning, Christina. Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to Embracing Your Greatness. I'm so excited for today's show. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully, you found me that I've been moved here now to uh, Mondays at 10. So, um, Embracing Your Greatness, for those of you that haven't heard or aren't aware of what I do on my show, is um, basically it's about reestablishing the dignity of the human person, but looking at different cultural events, what's going on in the world around us. And to get my programming for every month, I look at to the Holy Father's intentions for every month. So the Holy Father's intentions for the month of October are for the terminally ill that in their suffering that they may be sustained by faith in God and by love of others. And the missionary intention for the Holy Father is the celebration of World Mission Sunday and that we may increase in the people of God the passion for evangelization and the support of missionary activities through prayer and economic aid for the poorest of churches. So as I kind of discern and, and, and do that, I do this so that I'm kind of on the same page as the Holy Spirit. Whatever God's movement through the Holy Spirit is for the church at this particular time, I figured that's what I really should be focusing on so that whatever I'm doing can bear great fruit to what God is really trying to, to bring alive, to plant that seed and to sprout and to bring forth. Um, you know, got into fruition what God's what God's plan for the world is right now. So, you know, some of you I'm thinking that are listening, you might not even believe in God. Maybe you just accidentally came across this station. And so I want to let you know today we're going to be talking about some things that I think um, would be interested interesting even for you. We're going to be talking about the four last things. As I was contemplating this, I was thinking about how really um, thinking about the terminally ill and I was thinking about how all of us ultimately are going to die because you might be saying well how's that relevant to me being terminally ill well death that's what and guess what we have something in common all of us death and taxes have you heard that before well it's true and the four last things the Catholic Church has always talked about is something that we should really be contemplating um, on a regular basis if not daily and those four last things are death judgment hell and heaven. What are those four last things and why should we be contemplating them? So as I was looking at the Holy Father's intentions for this month, seeing that it was for the terminally ill, I was thinking to myself, you know, each one of us, we just don't know the day or the hour. We don't know um, how long we've been given to, to walk this earth. And when you think about life through that lens, it's a lot different. We start, I think you maybe take uh, things less for granted. And you realize maybe even some of those compulsory purchases that you might want to get. Um, it, it, that, by the way, was some of the Magnificat reading for today. I don't know if uh, any of you read the Magnificat, but I am a huge proponent of it. And I'm going to be talking about that a little bit in depth in just one sec. But... Um, is about you know these material things we can, can become so distracted and what we really need to be thinking about are those four last things and that's not warped and that's not um, you know being a pessimist or 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 thinking um, you know I, I don't know some people would say wow how depressing to think about your death um, but I know one of the books I'm going to be talking about today, my guest today after we come back from break is going to be Joe Condit. I've had him on uh, a couple of other times and I like to do that because I am a speaker with CMG Booking and Joe Condit has added me as one of his speakers. and. That's the, the missionary intention, is that we need to be go forth being missionaries and to share the faith and to do it joyfully. How do you do that joyfully when you're talking about death, right? Death and judgment and hell and heaven. Well, you can and you should because these are the things that are relevant conversations to uh, the average person walking down the street. That person, just like you, is not going to live forever. That person also has a day that God knows the day is and the hour of which he is going to um, he's going to meet his maker. That person might not believe he's going to meet a maker, but he will. Um, and that's a whole nother show, talking about whether God exists or not. Uh, you can tune into some of my archive programs that are on my YouTube channel so that you can hear that discussion I had with Dr. Peter Kreeft where we discussed um, if, if there is a God and the whole atheistic versus um, Catholic view on that subject. But um, into Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales, he actually talks about a whole, there's a whole exercise in here that can help you to contemplate those four last things. And he says that it's actually a good thing to contemplate, um, this is going to sound morbid, but the worms eating your body. <laughs> 
Is it really? Is this a morbid show? No. I'm get, This is going to be a joy-filled, awesome program today. Um, but what does that mean? Why are these saints saying like we should be contemplating these things? And is it morbid? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think that there can be some great fruit born from the fact that um, we contemplate the fact that we 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 aren't pers we will we aren't immortal and we we are our soul is immortal but our our bodies are not it wasn't meant to, to be that way we were designed we were created by god so that we would actually live forever it is disordered that our body and soul um become disjointed at death that is you know one of the results of sin is that we become separated but it was never create we were never created um with the intention of separating our body from our soul. Um, for those of you that love St. Teresa the Little Flower, I sure do, her feast day was October 1st. Um, if you look at my blog on embracingyourgreatness.blogspot.com, that's embracingyourgreatness.blogspot.com, I think uh, maybe it's two years ago, I don't know, you have to look through the old archives, I think it's called Looking Over My Shoulder. And I. I have a whole writing that I did. It was actually per, uh, printed in, I think it was Genevieve Kanicki's book, uh, Showers from Heaven, which was a whole bunch of compilation of writings on St. Teresa the Little Flower. And my story about my experience with St. Teresa the Little Flower is in that book. But um, this is one of, this book here, The End of the Present World and the Mysteries of the Future Life. This was one of St. Teresa's favorite books. Um, she said, reading this book was one of the greatest graces of my life. That's St. Teresa, uh, the little flower, St. Teresa of the Sioux. And what I find fascinating about this book, The End of the Present World and the Mysteries of the Future Life, is that St. Teresa, not only did she say it was one of the greatest graces, she said, I read it at the window of my study, and the impression I received from it is too intimate and too sweet for me to express all the great truths of religion, the mysteries of eternity plunged into my soul, into a happiness, not of this earth. But it's kind of neat because one of the things that uh, in my inadequate formation of being Catholic, I didn't understand what the state of the glorified bodies would be at, at the resurrection. All of that kind of stuff is, like, I didn't quite understand that. My kids ask me questions. And what's great about this is there's a there's a whole section in here. Um, the Resurrection of the Dead and the General Judgment is one of the chapters, and the Place of Immortal Life and the State of Glorified Bodies after the Resurrection. And uh, some other things too. Purgatory, Eternal Punishment, and the Unfortunate Destiny. So some really great, great uh, writings that I think, if you're interested in uh, this book, would help kind of expound on the conversation and discuss, discussion I'm going to be having today on the four last things. So um, before I, we, uh, we get into that, though, I'm going to finish off this first segment of the program talking to you about how important it is for each of us to kind of be on that same page okay of of contemplating and listening and opening ourselves to hearing hearing God speak to us now for those of you that you know maybe came across the station by accident um, maybe you're even struggling with believing in there's there's a God and maybe some of you believe in God but you really struggle with um, does he, he this dryness I know St. Teresa uh, or excuse me blessed uh, Mother Teresa, she went through this long, dark, dry period where she felt felt like um, God wasn't speaking to her. She had this deep thirst going on, and then I, I've I've heard through some of other people's writings that she experienced like an ecstasy um, uh, before her death. But uh, Saint John of the Cross was another person too that kind of went through these periods of feeling not abandoned or dry, or that somehow God. Um, not had forsaken them, but just somehow wasn't communicating. And I, I've had friends that have said to me, well, I don't really, I don't get what you get, Christine. I don't feel like God's speaking to me. And so Lecto Divina, I don't know if you've heard of Lecto Divina, but it's kind of prayerfully reading through things, scripture, books. Um, I like to do that with the Magnificat. And this can be a way that you can actually hear God speaking to you internally. You get a discernment of sorts. And remember, silence is so important that that helps us to kind of hear and receive that in our hearts. But um, the Magnificat was 
it was really transforming for me this year because uh, I had never read the Magnificat. I kind of saw it here and there growing up. Although, for those of you who know me, you know that I, I wasn't really raised Catholic. I was baptized Catholic because that's what you do to babies. But we didn't go to Mass regularly, and I wasn't really very aware of my Catholic faith other than having like um, a Protestant Bible in our house that I think, I don't know if my mom, I think, no, I think my mom got it. Um, she, I think it was a Catholic Bible. We had a, a Protestant one, but then we had a Catholic Bible. So yeah, it was a Catholic Bible and I was reading through it and it was, it was given to her when she, um, when she had her second marriage blessed. And so I know, it does not sound weird. She wasn't practicing Catholic yet. She knew it was important to have her marriage blessed. Um, that's a whole other show as well, because I, I really think there's something to the community of saints and those Catholic family members that had passed before before us that were praying for intercession for me and my mom and and my siblings and I do think that had a, a big role to play in um, kind of establishing uh, this desire for faith in our family life but the Magnificats I started reading in January and the first the first one in January was Mary holding Jesus as a little infant on her lap and it, Saint Joseph is in front of her and he's kind of just reverencing this and what I felt like is, as I was reading this, it oh, I felt like God was speaking to me every single day. Uh, it was like crazy weird. I'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's like speaking right into my soul. And the covers of each one really, for each month, were, were manifesting the spiritual journey that God is taking me on right now. And when I was talking to friends, they're all getting the same the same journey because something's moving, folks, in the church right now. Something's happening, and and those who have ears to hear will hear, and that's kind of what's going on. And um, I really felt like this was this invitation to see that there is something mysterious and beautiful going on between the relationship of Mary and Jesus, and that uh, St. Joseph is helping to pave that way of protection for this. So the next month then was February, and this was crazy because look at this. The the cover was the dove bringing the olive branch to Noah on the ark, and that's exactly kind of what I felt like God was saying, was, you know what, we're preparing for something, and y'all better get on the ark. And an ark, of course, of the new covenant is Mary. And for those of you who know, and if you just even look at the call signature, the, the picture that I have on my Facebook page, Embracing Your Greatness for this show, it is Our Lady of Guadalupe, who looked behind she's I, I have her image everywhere because I really truly believe that she is receptivity and that we are all being opened and there is a healing being poured out for those that are open to it so if you desire healing if you're struggling and dealing with something that you also feel you need help with ask for Our Lady of Guadalupe open yourself trust in that say Our Lady of Guadalupe Come and help me to deal with these things. Maybe you are at home right now and you uh, are terminally ill. And that can be, I am sure, um, a scary thing. And, 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 you know, the enemy likes to come and put uh, fear and doubt into to our minds. And so it's so important to, to understand what trust is and to open ourselves to that. In March, we see the Annunciation and um, just this, this beautiful, again, of receptivity. You know, she could have been stoned to death saying yes. And um, that courage, I feel like we, I felt like that whole month I was being called to be courageous and to persevere. Um, and that those were going to be very strong virtues, perseverance and, and, and to be courage, courageous in these times. And, you know, we're kind of sheltered here in the United States. Uh, we don't we don't have the same kinds of of persecution that those overseas uh, are going through, and so that's that's something that um, I think that we maybe take for granted that it's so easy. Uh, and so the next month then is is April, and if you look here, it's it's Peter, and he's been called by Jesus to walk out on water. That was the image on the front of the Magnificat for that month. So I could go through on all of these and share with you. Uh, maybe if we have some more time at the end of the program, I'll do that. But um, really, if, if, you're, if you're looking for ways to hear God speaking to you, I would encourage you to get uh, a Magnificat and ask the Holy Spirit to open your heart to the message God wants you to receive from it and then wait because he's going to talk to you. 
is going to speak to your heart about what he's calling uh, you to do with with your yes and your fiat, your greatness. So, okay, we're uh, going to be heading off for break here. And when we come back, my guest, Joe Condit, he started uh, CMG Booking. It is a wonderful website, cmgbooking.com. And he has... Oh my gosh, I don't know if it's hundreds, but it's a lot of wonderful, great speakers that you can bring into your area, uh, and I encourage you to check out that website. So stay tuned. We'll be back with Joe Condit. We'll be talking about the four last things, death, judgment, hell, and heaven when we come back with Embracing Your Greatness. Stay tuned. <music> 